Kyle Mohan Racing and today we are doing a tech talk. We're going to talk about some of the components out of my Formula Drift Mazda RX-8 1000 horsepower 3 rotor and as luck would have it I really wanted this whole setup to uh, go through the end of the year but if you follow the channel we actually uh, caught on fire at Super Drift uh, this past weekend and although the motor and car drove away from that particular event I really felt like it was a great opportunity before Irwindale to take things apart check things out and although I wanted this motor to make it through Irwindale because I wanted to talk about how this motor had gone basically a, a season and a half or close to two years of a competition use, um, we just came up a little short and I thought it would be a better situation if we did the inspection now. So I happen to have the center rotor um, out of my motor and one of the main bearings. And we're going to take a quick look at these two vital components um, and look at the where and exactly what's been going on inside a 10,000 RPM, 30 pounds of boost, 200 shot of nitrous competition 20B motor that I build. And I always say it, remember, this is all stuff that uh, we practiced at Mazda Tricks and developed as part of the racing program while I was the engine builder there. And I've continued to practice a lot of the techniques and uh, information that we developed in those racing programs as an engine builder. And I'm just very happy with how my personal race motors and a lot of our customers competition builds have been going over these past few years. So the information we're using is stuff that I believe to be reliable, correct, and uh, we can talk about exactly what we see. And uh, here we have it. So this is the center rotor out of my uh, competition motor. And uh, the big things I like to look at is the fact that it's really not carboned up. Uh, we do run a lot of water injection on top of the ethanol nitrous. And uh, I see we get a little bit of rust in here, but more importantly, we're not getting carbon buildup. Basically zero carbon buildup. It's a big uh, thing that I always look at, um, depending on what type of premixes are being used and what type of fuels are being used, you can cut down the lifespan of a rotary dramatically if any of those combinations aren't uh, correct or are causing a gumming or carbon buildup. And uh, one of the things we've switched to and have been testing, and I wanted to point this out, is uh, we've actually been using the new Bio Rotary Racing Premix for quite a while now, and this is one of the cleaner competition rotors I've seen in a while. Um, I did wipe some of the oil off so it didn't ruin the table here. It's still getting some oil on it, but you can see it's still oil directly from, from out of the motor. Um, another great note is this bearing is a competition Mazda bearing, and it's got about two years on it. That's a lot of competition use, dynoing. Uh, I've missed some shifts. Uh, we're going to 10,000 RPM, and there's almost no wear. Obviously, you have to have proper oil pressure. In some of my previous tech talks, I've talked about the dry sump system we're using um, and the plumbing we're using. But obviously, if you don't have a quality oil that provides the viscosity and protection under different thermal changes, pressure changes, then you're going to have more bearing wear. And, and really, a bearing failure can be one of the worst failures because that can take everything out in the motor. And so, again, you know, I'm, I'm pointing out that now for over two years, close to three years, we've been using the Biosyn Extra motor oil from Renewable Lubricants, and I love this stuff. I'm running the 2050. Uh, RCR uh, just did some testing recently, Richard Childress Racing, and, and they compared uh, the Renewable Lubricants products to Mobile One products. So I think that's very good, and if you look inside my motor, I would absolutely agree. This is some of the best bearing wear I've seen in a long time out of a competition motor. There's absolutely no Babbitt anywhere being shown and and obviously the mileage is not like a, a street car but two years thousand horsepower dyno days practice days competition days 
Um, huge heat changes, overheating sometimes, running it cold sometimes, competition is brutal. I think formula drift professional drifting is one of the hardest motorsports on engine components and physical uh, drivetrain components in motorsports right now. Here we've got one of my main bearings. And same thing, uh, this is a multi-window bearing. I pressed it out so we could get a really good look on it. And uh, same thing, absolutely no Babbitt. So that means we've had very little total wear. And although there are a couple little scratches and a little bit of marking, I think it might be worth me looking into improving my oil filter situation, although we are running a competition Wix filters. Over, this is the back side of the bearing, so this is where you're going to have more wear as the eccentric shaft flexes on 20Bs or 13Bs at high RPM. And you see I've got a little bit of wear, just the tiniest amount of Babbitt color showing on the back end of the bearing. But basically no slippage. Pretty typical looking bearing. And that's amazing because this is not a typical motor or a typical car. Other uh, things I'd like to point out, we have absolutely no side tip uh, rotor interference going on. These are KMR Mazda Trick side cut rotors. This particular motor was not a lightened uh, rotor motor because this originally started as one of my backup motors, but we've been running it in competition anyways. Horsepower wise, uh, everything's been the same. But uh, I think uh, I always would recommend lightening if you have the opportunity, but the side cutting obviously allowed us to achieve that RPM horsepower and not have any interference or issues within our side seals or corner seals. So huge thing I recommend, side cutting. It also was lightened, or sorry, not lightened, it was balanced by Mazda Trix. Uh, Mazda Trix does great high speed balancing. I think we still need to cover that in one of our tech talks, but uh, they've been doing it for 30 plus years. They've never had any issues with customers, personal race motors. They've got a ton of trophies up there in their lobby. Their balancing is good, and here's another motor to prove it. Long-term use, no interference. I don't bother facing the rotors. Um, these are just high-compression Series 4 rotors, one of my favorite rotors. Cheap, easy to find, good compression, makes horsepower, and very durable. So this has been a little bit of a KMR tech talk. We're looking at the inside components of my 20B race competition motor. We had it out due to some recent events. Um, I did end up uh, not putting this rotor back in because we actually had one cracked corner seal and uh, things were looking uh, like they could have been better. So we're gonna cover more components and talk more about the internals of my motor. Um, over these next uh, week or so before Irwindale, but this to me was really, really good stuff. Obviously, uh, the premix has gone through testing. It's hitting the shelves as we speak. You can pick it up from KMR, Mazda Tricks, or direct from Renewable Lubricants. If you do that, if you go direct, use code KMR10 for a discount. But I really am excited to show this because here it is. No carbon buildup, great bearing uh, wear characteristics, basically the lack there of wear. And uh, we're using a, a biosynthetic oil and bio uh, premix. So get with the program, get with the times. It's uh, looking great over here at KMR. We're going to showcase more of this stuff. Follow the channel, say hi, ask questions. If you want to know more about any of the stuff we're talking about here, hey, put it down below. And we'll be covering it in probably the next video about this motor and about this car because uh, this is cool stuff. We've been waiting two years to talk about it. Yes, WPC treated it as well. Thank you, Mazda Tricks. Thank you, Renewable. Thank you, Mazda. We're looking good.